Good afternoon. I'm Edgar Allan Poe. And today, I'll be talking about the negligence of U.S. war veterans. During a dark, dull, dark, and soundless day in autumn, a day in which heavy clouds covered a rarely seen sun, a man is found laying centered in his bed, unaccompanied by any entity but tick, tock, time, and found himself to be within view of nothing but his memories. The smiles under his eyes had become much heavier than any form from formation of cumulonimbus clouds, for the bed that housed and comforted his body did not do the same for his restless soul. In itself, his memories were mysteries, all unsolvable, unable to be grappled with by the shadowy memories that crowded him as he pondered alone. He was forced to fall back upon the unsatisfactory conclusion that, while beyond doubt, there are combinations of very simple human objects, such as the death of a comrade, which had the power of breaking down the human psyche. However, the tangibility of these things is only relatable to some. To others, they're no more than just objects. My first time meeting this man, man came at the wee hours of the night in the office of Dr. Sue Ann Wiley. She was a qualified, capable therapist. However, the man's inability to pay heavily affected his session with her. This man had been a longtime friend of Dr. Wiley's, affording him a one-time session, free of charge. At this time, I had been researching the lasting effects of post-traumatic stress disorder and was led to this office where Dr. Wiley was holding the session. During the session, the men and the therapist made awkward eye contact as he continued to, dump, to stumble over the memories that troubled him during the war. He increasingly became visibly frustrated, retelling the hauntings he endured in the solidarity of a lonely household. Taking into account his, his time in the war, his eyes seemed irrefutably troubled, but the deep fuchsia color, accompanied with the weighted bags under his eyes, gave him the appearance of a man stopped by fiends, he continued on. Upon gazing in the mirror, the clothes that I once wore became increasingly similar to a military uniform that once marked my soul. The reflection of the mirror altered my appearance. I wasn't myself, said the man, with vivid freshness of imagination. The man had abandoned everything, all but his confidence and trust in Dr. Wiley. Despite the charge-free session, Dr. Wiley subscribed the man some sort of sleeping pills and sent him on his way. Following the session, the man never caught my vision again. And like clockwork, tick, tock. His time ticked, topped, without end, spiraling to his inevitable suicide three weeks later. The beast that is madness comes often to those entangled in war. Those whose minds are constantly intertwined with fear and agony. The deeds that come with war require no conscience and are soon to come without consequence. The government often takes on characteristics of a puppeteer, controlling the army as they tour for the country. But once the puppet has served its purpose, it's cast aside and left broken. The, co the government provides a chamber of nervous agitation to those vested in camouflage trousers and headwear. And this chamber is yet to be opened, still housing the dead and mentally wounded. Upon putting this into perspective, this man becomes insignificant. Being the spectators that you all are, you only see what's projected on the screen. This man is not the sole possessor of this problem. Thousands of soldiers are struck down by their own memories of war, despite the capability of the government to better these people's minds. It is possible, I suspect, that a mere assessment of particulars such as health care, morals, and pure decency would be sufficient to annihilate this sickness. But who am I to place my faith in such fools? I am but a man who attributes my caring foolishly to those who will never possess it. Never possess it.